And um, I'm just going to read a little synopsis of uh, John's history with the council, and I'm sure people will want to join me in uh, paying tribute to him. So John was first elected to the council, council as a councillor for this card when he was aged 35 in 1975. And he was re-elected three more times in the ward, finishing in 1991, when he stood as a Conservative candidate in Hoylake Ward, now Hoylake and Mel's Ward, which includes Central West Kirby, where he has served as a councillor for nearly 27 years. In 1976, Councillor Hale was made Deputy Chairman for Education. In 1977, John became Chairman of the Housing Committee until 1980. And in 1980, after five years on the council, John was made deputy leader of the Conservative group and deputy leader of the council. In 1985, he was elected leader of the Conservative group and leader of the council. In 1984, John went to Brussels with Wirral Council's then chief executive, Cliff Darley, and secured a grant of £1 million for the renovation and extension of the West Kirby Marine Lake. He has served on numerous council committees, including Audit and Risk Management Committee, Council Excellence, Standards and Constitutional Oversight Committee, and served in the Cabinet in the early days of the new com committee system. And I'm sure you will agree with me, that's an exemplary service of record to our committee. So, um, I'm going to, and I understand that people also want to pay tribute to, to John, so I'm going to invite uh, Councillor Ian Lewis, leader of the Conservative Group, to say a few words. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, I never thought I'd see the day when I'd be paying tribute to Councillor Hale for stepping down from this authority after, as you said, a record of 43 years, a lifetime indeed, of public service to this borough. Uh, whatever our own individual politics, Madam Mayor, I think we would all share the admiration for anybody who can put up with being a councillor for 43 years. <laughs> And certainly the contribution that he's made, uh, some of which you've touched on yourself uh, tonight, Madam Mayor. Uh, uh, I would only half the Conservative group uh, send our best wishes to John and to Tricia. I think too often as, uh, the public sees the pressures, sometimes, that councillors are under. They don't always see the pressures that councillors' partners and spouses are under and the sacrifices they make as their loved one pursues a political uh, career within the local authority. So on behalf of Tricia and John, we send you our best wishes for a long and fruitful retirement from World Borough Council. I'm sure you wouldn't miss the laptop. It was unused. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, Madam Mayor, uh, John has said he will continue to be involved with our local party. I think it was at the last meeting that Councillor Fabs uh, paid tribute to one of his party members, long-standing party members, had sadly passed away. Uh, we also recognise the contribution that John has made throughout his life to the Conservative Party, firstly in Lisgard and more recently in Hoylake and Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Yeah, uh, I'm going to echo what Councillor Thanks to my group to, for John's service and to wish both him and 
Trisha and his family um, a very long and very happy retirement. So thank you very much, John. Thank you. Councillor Gilchrist. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. I'm beginning to get worried because I can remember John through most of that career and what I want to pay tribute to is that length of public service. But I'm also remembering the grasp of detail that John always had, the acumen as I describe it that he brought to any subject, the rigour of his analysis and ability to marshal facts and to use them. Not what always agreed with the conclusions from the marshalling of facts well, John has this great ability to look at an issue and to separate all the issues that need consideration. I'm also really appreciative of what's been said by the Minister and Councillor Ian Lewis, because all members are always aware, night by night, of the way in which serving the public can affect our family and private lives. And to remember to have such a distinguished record of service and to remain constant at that, and also to urge and periods of ill health, both as a young man and in recent years, to survive all that and contribute to the community <coughs> a great achievement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gilchrist. Thank you all for those tributes. Um, I'm going to invite
we can have to vote down proceedings as some of us have found out. Um, I do want to thank you all uh, for the kind words and thank you for the and I do hope to drop in again sometime. Thank you very much.
occasions to attend uh, regarding the PC Phillips Brass Steam Way, but also you had the occasion of great justice being achieved in the memorial for the Hillsborough victims. Thank you for your bearing and courtesy throughout all that. I expect there's been a year which you haven't had a chance to do anything at home, if my experience and colleagues is anything to go by. I think Bill will have an interesting time tidying up all the photographs, the memorabilia, creating the files and sorting it all out, which is quite a mammoth event. Thank you for your charm in the chair in the meetings, which helped keep us in order in a courteous, thoughtful, light manner and avoided many confrontations that happened in the past. Talking of past confrontations, I think, I'm not sure the year, but Councillor Lewis recalls an earlier campaign of yours. We do believe that you made an early uh, adventure out into the wilds of Eastern many years ago, but um, the borough gained in another ward an outstanding citizen and a servant to the local people, for which we thank you.
move standing order 8C to move an item of uh, business of the agenda. I'd like to move to item 9F, Cabinet Members' Question Time, be voted on prior to Cabinet Members' Question Time. asking for an item to be brought forward before the item is heard on the agenda. We're asking for item 9F, which is the time allowed for executive members of reports to be brought forward. Because at present it's 30 minutes and the new amendment is for 45 minutes. So I'm going to put that to the voting council now. All those in favour? Just one extension. That's clearly carried. Thank you. Okay.
presentation from the Chief Fire Officer. Uh, we're going to hear now from Dan Stevens. Um, he's accompanied by Councillor Dave Hanratty this evening, but I don't know if you're both speaking or uh, Dan, Dan Stevens who's speaking, addressing Council. So if you'd like to come forward. Um, Members, Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service has had to deal with significant financial challenges since 2004. <coughs> this has been compounded by a 50% real terms reduction in its revenue support grant since 2010-11. This is the most severe cut to any fire and rescue service in the country. By the next financial year, the service will have lost 355 fighter posts. 200 support service posts since 2010-11. This has resulted in the loss of just short of 50% of our immediately available fire appliances. The impact on the service, as you would expect, has been significant. Members will be well aware of the changes the authority has had to make on the web, affecting Upton, Westerby and Wallace. These are not changes I would have recommended if it were not for the financial challenge faced by the authority. These are certainly not changes the authority would have approved if they were not recognised as being the least worst options in the circumstances. This has been acknowledged by the Fire Brigade Junior, who have welcomed our commitment to maintain a whole time service. This, alongside our aspiration to ensure that every fire place in Merseyside is staffed with five firefighters from life in many other parts of the country. You will understand that in any large or protracted incident that presents us significant challenges, not just at the incident itself, but also in maintaining emergency cover across Merseyside. Incidents do not stop occurring elsewhere just because we are dealing with one large incident. On New Year's Eve and into New Year's Day, we responded to property fires, road traffic collisions, and other life risk incidents at the same time as dealing with the fire at the Brunaco Arena. Appliances from Cheshire, Greater Manchester and Lancashire were mobilised to cover key stations across Merseyside and were mobilised onto life risk incidents. This simply would not have happened less than a decade ago. I have briefed senior civil servants in the Home Office on the challenges arising from the Echo Arena incident, and they in turn have briefed ministers. I have a meeting arranged with the minister to set out my concerns in more detail. I believe that there is a growing recognition within government that the Fire and Rescue Service cannot sustain any further cuts. This motion is therefore extremely timely. I speak on behalf of all employees of Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service and I ask that you support the motion advanced by the Widow Fire and Rescue Authority members. Thank you, Madam Mayor.
Questioners, please ensure that your question is no longer than two minutes. The total number of questions on any one report will not normally exceed more than five. Okay, so uh, and are there any questions which councillors wish to ask in respect of any of the reports before you? Thank you.